Okay, good morning, guys. Um, I miss being at school with you, but I hope that you are having a good day so far. I hope that you're on your best behavior for your sub. Um, and I just have this little video I want you to watch for today's lesson. So I want to start by going to Schoology because I want to go over a couple of things on like, you know, our normal housekeeping. Um, you did not have any homework due today because your test review that I gave you last class is not due until the day you take your test. So C period that is Wednesday, D and E that is Tuesday. Um, so make sure that those get done. I did put um, an answer key in here. So go ahead and check that review for 7173. So you're welcome to check that um, also. If you need any help or need any extra review or anything before this test, please reach out because the next time I see you in person, we're taking this test. So if you need to come in for office hours or if you need to do a Zoom or if you need to um, you know, do any of those things, just reach out, just let me know um, and I'm here to help you. But um, know that the next time I see you, we're taking a test. So let's be prepared for that. Um, for today, there's a little message on your you know, Schoology homepage. It says to do today, three, five. So that's us right now. Um, if you are a virtual learner, I do not expect you to get on Zoom because I don't know if our um, subs have those um, Zoom links. So don't worry about getting on Zoom. Just watch this video and that will count. Um, if you're worried about attendance, you can just email me and I'll make sure that you're marked present. Um, again, I reminded you that you have a test. Again, C period, it's Wednesday. Um, D and E, it's Tuesday. Um, and then today's work is in your folder for today. So go to your organized by weeks, week nine, and then today's folder, Friday, three, five. Um, I want you, when you finish watching this video, to submit your notes. I want you to turn those in. There's a submission box already ready for you. And then any extra time, you can work on your homework for this section, or you can work on your review sheet or some other homework. Just make sure that you're using your time effectively. Um, this homework for C period is due on um, 3-8. That's Monday, because I see you one more time before we take our test. And then D and E, yours is not due until um, I think the next day in class, so whatever the day after the test is, I think D, that's going to be Wednesday for you, and E, it's Thursday. Um, don't quote me on that. I'll try and put my dates on Schoology. I really, truly have no idea <laughs> when I see you again. So take that with a grain of salt, but I just wanted to let you know when that's due. Um, a period, if you're watching this, um, we're doing this together online on Monday, but if anyone needs to um, watch it again, this YouTube video is for you. Um, and your homework is just due the next class I see you. So if you have a test, it's due the class after that. If it's if you do not, it's due um, the next day. So let me get into this um, organized by weeks. Let me get into our week nine. Um, and we're in our folder three, five. So this is the lesson we're doing today. It is not on your test. It is not what you're gonna be assessed on next week. So we're gonna do this lesson today on this video. And then when you're finished, this is your homework. We spend a couple days here, so if you're not really sure what's happening, go ahead and like do your best. Remember, you, you only get completion points by completing your homework, um, but know that if you're completely lost, we'll spend another day kind of wrapping this up and getting all of our questions answered. Um, we do a little radical review, so we've been doing a lot of factor trees, so we're doing that again here. Um, some geometric means and then some of the special problems with the triangles that we're going to learn in a few minutes. So go ahead and download both of those if you have them. And then again, just a reminder, you are submitting your notes. I'd like them today at the end of class. And your homework is just due um, when it's assigned on your page. And then you have a test coming up. So those are just a lot of housekeeping from me. So I want you to put your notes on Notability. And we're going to get started there. Um, I um, have this up, 7-4. We're doing our geometric means. So we're going to go ahead. There's my pen and get started. Okay, so geometric means, um, you've heard the word mean before. Mean means like the average. The average scores. So like when I do your guys' tests or quizzes, I figure out what the average is because I think that's a nice like um, number that helps me understand all of the data. Um, however, that's like our arithmetic mean. We're talking today about our geometric mean. And so when you put the word geometric in front of it, it looks a little bit different. Um, you can only do the geometric mean of positive numbers. So if I have two positive numbers, let's say they're A and B, the geometric mean is X such that this proportion is true. A over X equals X over D. So A, oh, that's not, why is that a D? 
It's not class unless Miss White messes up at least once, right? This hopefully is my only time. B. I don't know why that was different. That's okay. So X is the same number and that's important. And then A and B are the two numbers that are positive that we're finding the mean between. All right, so that's why we just spent a bunch of time doing proportions and setting those up because we now are gonna use the proportions with our geometric mean. So we did a lot of algebra already. Now we're kind of pulling our geometry into this. So we got a couple examples. We're gonna start by doing the geometric mean of 15 and 20. So geometric mean means that I'm gonna do 15 over X equals X over 20. Set it just up like I had before, 15 was my A, 20 was my B, and then I had X's in between. All right, so now I cross multiply, X times X is X squared, and then 15 times 20 is going to be, I believe, 300. All right, cool, now I gotta get rid of that square, so I'm gonna square root both sides. And, ooh, 300 is not a perfect square, so we gotta do our factor tree on that one. We've been doing this a lot, so I hope that this is either really good practice or something you're like, oh yeah, I've gotten good at this. So 300 factor tree off to the side. Um, some factors of 300. Um, the first thing I think of is three and 100. Okay, three is already a prime number, so that's perfect. And then I can break 100 down into 10 and 10. Now we could stop here because I already have a pair, but if you're like, no, I got to factor it all the way down, which a lot of you guys are really good at, I can break 10 into two and five and two and five. Okay, we've factored it all down. Now I want to find my pairs of numbers. So if you find one number written twice and we pair them up. So I've got two and two, that's one pair. And then I've got five and five, that's another pair. The first pair of two means I can bring one, two out. And then the pair of fives means that I can bring one five out. So I'm gonna do five times two on the outside and three has no friends, so he has to stay on the inside. So I'm gonna put radical three. Multiply two and five together to get my total answer of 10 root three. Now, what's gonna be funny is in algebra two and in pre-cal, I'm gonna be like, oh, if you do a square root, it's plus or minus, it's plus or minus, it's plus or minus, but I've got a geometric mean of these two positive numbers. So that means that we're always gonna have a positive here. So we don't have to worry about a plus or minus. You can just keep it positive like normal. And this is my final answer, okay? All right, let's do another one. Exact same idea. This one looks like it has radicals. So that kind of scares us a little bit, but we're able to do this. I've got geometric mean. Now eight root five is my A and then root five is just my B. So I'm gonna do eight root five over X equals X over root five. Awesome, cross multiply. I get X squared equals eight root five times root five. I don't know if we've done a lot of multiplying radicals, so I'm just gonna pretend like you don't know what's happening. If I'm multiplying these radicals together, I can multiply the numbers under the radical together to stay under the radical, and you can multiply numbers that aren't under the radical together. There's only one number outside of the radical and that's eight, okay? Now, if I've got these two numbers under the radical, root five times root five or um, square root five or radical five, whatever you wanna call it, I'm just gonna do it off to the side. Radical five times radical five is going to be radical 25. Again, we get to multiply the numbers under the radical. Now that I have radical 25 though, I wanna simplify it. You can make a factor tree or we can just know that root 25 is the same thing as Five. Five is my answer. Square root of five or square root of 25 is just five. So this becomes eight times five. Now I'm not done yet because I still have this x squared. I multiply eight times five and I get 40. And then now I'm ready to square root both sides. Square root, square root. Oh, and before we do anything, we got to do our factor tree for 40. So I've got 40 over here. I just multiplied eight and five times it. So I'm gonna do those first. So I've got five and I've got eight. Eight can be broken down to two and four and then four breaks down to two and two. I've got one pair of twos, but that's it, right? My other thing, five and my other two, they don't have any friends. So they're gonna stay under the radical together. And then I've got a pair of two, so I get to bring one, two out. So I've got two root five times two is going to be 10. So the highlighted one comes outside, the two in the box stay under the radical. So X 
squared or x equals root 40 is the same thing as x equals 2 root 10. Again, no plus or minus because it's just, um, again, geometric mean is positive numbers. All right, there's going to be a couple problems on your homework like this. Let me know if you have any questions. Go back and watch these two examples again if you need more help. But if not, let's keep moving forward. The next thing is this theorem. I wish it had a fun special name, but it doesn't. It's how I can um, take one triangle with an altitude and make that three triangles that are all similar to each other. Now, what does it mean to be similar? Remember, similar means that all of my angles are congruent and all of my sides are proportional. We don't have to prove this because I'm telling you by the theorem that they're similar. So if we take the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, or the, if we take the hypotenuse of the, uh, the altitude of the hypotenuse, that divides the triangle into two smaller triangles that are similar to the original one and similar to each other. If you go back, what section was that? Section five that we talked about altitudes. Altitude goes from a vertex and then makes a 90 degree angle with the opposite side. So BD is my altitude right here. I'm just gonna write that because I love to remind us about vocab words. BD is altitude, okay? So that means I've got three triangles. I've got my little one right here, got a baby triangle, ABD. I've got a medium sized triangle next to it. And then the entire shape that's the big Papa triangle. So what we're doing is we're gonna break it apart and we're gonna put it um, in a comparable way. So do you see how I relabeled all of these triangles with the right angle in the corner? And it looks like the small side on bottom and the longer side on like the, like up and down. That's gonna help us be able to write a similarity statement. Um, the reason I didn't name the triangles after I named ABD is because I was afraid that I didn't know which order they went in. I have a hard time keeping it straight. So I think it's so helpful to redraw them off to the side. Okay, let's do the big Papa triangle first. So that's this big shape right here. So my right angle is at B and then it looks like the smaller side is from A to B. So if I'm gonna label my triangle I've got over here, B goes where the right angle is. And then A goes on the bottom because that's a smaller side I think than BC and C will go up at the top. So I just kind of like rotated my triangle around to be B in the bottom corner and then A and C in the other places. Okay, similarly, now let's do the medium triangle. So now I'm focusing on this one. My right angle is right here at D. And then if I'm looking at it, I think that BD is the smaller side than DC. So I'm gonna write D in the bottom corner where the 90 degree angle is. And I'm gonna write B in the bottom left and then C up top. Okay, the last one's the baby triangle, kind of like Goldilocks over here. The triangle here has a right angle at D. So I've got D again as my right angle. And then it looks like AD is the shorter side than BD. This actually looks like I just picked up this triangle and like shifted it over. So this one looks exactly like it's supposed to. So I've got DA and then DB. So I'm gonna put D down here. A in the bottom left, because that side looks shorter than the side from B to D. If I label them with letters too, that's going to be an easy way to decipher which goes where, but um, I'll try and make it obvious. If you see the next example, it's even more obvious than the one that we're doing. So if you're confused by that, let's do a couple more before um, we decide that we're to totally lost. Now that I've labeled my shapes, we're going to write our similarity statements. I don't care how you start it. Just whatever you pick the first triangle, we have to match it all the way through. So let's say I do A, B, C for my first triangle, A, B, C. The second triangle, the mama triangle is gonna go B, D, C. And then the third triangle, the baby one's gonna go A, D, B. We had to follow the same pattern. We started at the bottom left, went to the right angle and then up. So what this statement says to me is that all of the first numbers or the first letters, excuse me, A, B, and A, those are all congruent angles and their corresponding shapes. Same thing for the next one, B, D, and D. 
Those are all congruent angles in their corresponding shapes. See how I already had B before? I had B right here at the beginning. Those are different angles though, because I'm cutting B up. I'm not doing all of B each time. Um, we're doing like the little baby triangles, only doing like this small part of B. That's why B can be different angles and congruent to different pieces. And then the last one, then that means that C and C and B are all congruent angles. Um, one good easy way to check yourself is where the right angles are. B is a right angle, D is a right angle, and D is a right angle. So they all should be in the same place. Mine are all in the middle. Yours could all be first. Yours could all be last. I don't really care. But that's a nice way to check yourself because it's so easy to see, okay, those are all the right angles. They're all in the right spot. So those are all my right angles. All right. Okay. Questions? We're going to do this again. So I challenge you to pause this video, try the next example, and then come back to me. All right. I hope you paused. I hope you came back. Um, this next problem, I'm going to draw my mom and papa triangle because I did not do that this time for myself. So I'm going to do some notability magic. I've got this triangle over here. I'm gonna shift it over and I'm gonna like really turn it. I know that that kind of distorted it a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna turn it and I've got my right angle here and the right angle was D, the small angle was F up top and then the bigger angle is E at the bottom. So I just physically flipped it around. I'm gonna do the mama triangle next. Um, I'm gonna do notability magic, but my right angle is gonna to have to go like over here on the left side. And so I'm just gonna draw this one next to it. If you try and do notability magic, I maybe just am not smart enough, but I don't know how to flip it. So like the right angle is not on this side and then it's on the other side. So that's a user error, but whatever. So in the mama triangle, I'm looking again at this one right here. My right angle is H. My like little small one on top is F and then the bigger angle on the bottom is D. And then last I've got my baby triangle. And again, he's gonna be backward. Ooh, he's gonna be backwards of what I want. So I'm gonna go read just, just, ooh, just redraw him over here. Again, H is my right angle. Let me go trace that so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm looking at this baby triangle. H is my right angle. And then it looks like D is the really skinny one on top and E is the bigger one on bottom. Again, if you get lazy and try not to draw these out, you could make just such an easy mistake. So I really, really encourage you to draw these out. And then from here, you can go with whatever order to label them. I'm gonna go um, F, D, E. F, ooh, pen please, F, D, E. I'm gonna go F, H, D. And I'm gonna go D, H, E. Again, because I drew them in this way, they should already match up. My F and D should all be the same angle. My D, my H, my H should all be the same angle. And then E and D and E should all be the same angle. So I purposely drew them not messed up. I can't draw one like with the skinny side or the really like long side up top and then one with the long side on bottom and be like, oh, look, these are similar triangles. They're not. Rotate them, make them be the same. All right, let's flip our paper over. The next two things um, are different theorems and I have like little cute, I guess, names to help us know what's going on with them. Um, I've got the heartbeat theorem and I've got the Nike swoosh theorem. So these theorems are um, kind of like a motion to help me understand how I'm gonna write my proportion. So I find that like if I like touch things or have like a little motion to draw each time then I'm able to like figure out what my um, proportion is better than just being like, think through it. That doesn't really work for me. So this first one's called the heartbeat theorem because if you know anything about like heartbeats, heart rates, if you've been to the hospital and they've got like the little heart rate monitor, if you watch shows like Grey's Anatomy, you know the heart heartbeat goes like this, like up and down and up and down. Ours doesn't quite look like a heartbeat, but it goes just up and then back um, even. So that this is the shape that we're gonna draw. We're gonna go flat and then up and then retrace back and then flat again. This theorem like officially states in a right triangle, the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse is the geometric mean of the lengths of the segments of the hypotenuse. So the segments of the hypotenuse 
are like the um, outer pieces, the segments, like the broken up parts of the hypotenuse are the outer pieces. And then the altitude is the geometric mean. So that's the one that gets written twice in there. To mimic that, we do our heartbeat. So I'm gonna go from left to right. I'm gonna start at A and I'm gonna go to the first segment of the hypotenuse, which is X. And I'm gonna jump up to the altitude, which is W. I'm gonna jump back down the altitude, which is W. And then I'm gonna finish the hypotenuse, which is Y. So I did X, W, W, Y. Let me retrace that one more time. This is my heartbeat, over, up, back down, over. That's the heartbeat. I did part of the hypotenuse to the altitude, and then I did the altitude to the other part of the hypotenuse. You know that you're right because everything we're doing here is geometric mean, so the middle piece should always be the same. It may not always be your variable, but it's always the same. So the thing that I have circled will always be the same. Always the same, always the same, always the same. Okay. So again, geometric mean, that's why I circled that. Okay, that's the general form. So we're gonna do an example with actual numbers now, okay? This one says find y. Okay, it's flipped a little bit, but I still have my altitude here. This is my altitude, and then this is my hypotenuse. So we're just gonna heartbeat this. You can start from either side. So you can start on top at A, or you can start on bottom at C, and I'll show you that both work. So we're gonna do part of the hypotenuse for up to the altitude over y. And then I'm gonna come back, y, and then the other part of the hypotenuse. So I did altitude, y, other part of the hypotenuse, five. If you did it backwards, you're gonna get the same thing. I've got five over y equals y over four. Do you see at the end of the day there, I would still have my y's get multiplied together and I'd still get my four and my five multiplied together. And that's really all that matters in the end. So either way you decide to do it, I've got y squared equals 20. Oh, again, good thing we've been doing a lot of square roots. We've just been setting ourselves up for success. Square root, square root. 20 is not a perfect square. So we gotta do a little factor tree off to the side. 20 is two and 10 and 10 is two and five. Oh, I do have a common factor of two though. So I take a two out, but five has no friends. So he stays inside y equals two root five. Now we happen to find the altitude. You may not find that. Maybe I give you that number and you find a different side. So maybe I could have given you like, this was like two and then this was X and we don't know. So just because we solved the example where the variable was the altitude does not mean that that's always gonna be the case. All right, let's keep rolling. If you need to see that again, please watch it again. We'll do more examples and there's more problems like that on your homework, okay? Or let me know and we can talk um, um, between now and class so that I can get you all caught up on this. The other theorem is another cute shape. We call it the Nike swoosh or like a little check mark. So we're doing like a check mark this way and then a check mark back. Check mark, check mark. So we're not going any more than just a check mark. The Nike swoosh doesn't go like this, doesn't make like a weird triangle shape or a heartbeat. It just does a, a check mark. Check, 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 check. This one states that the altitude of the hypotenuse of the right triangle intersects it so that the length of each leg is a geometric mean of the length of the entire hypotenuse and the, and the length of its adjacent segments of the hypotenuse. This one's a hard one for me. I wish I had like a cute way. I think the other one was much easier because you were always going through the altitude, you know, part, altitude, altitude part. This one's not as simple. This one we can do two ways. Um, depending on what we wanna find. If we're looking for side AB, which is M, or if we're looking for side BC, which is P. So I'm gonna start on the part of the hypotenuse. So I'm gonna start on the, the side that's already broken up. So I'm gonna do X over, and then one of the, the sides next to it. So it's adjacent side, M. And then again, it's geometric mean, which means I've got to trace back over that equals M over, and then the entire length of the hypotenuse. And in the, this case, the entire length of this hypotenuse is gonna be X plus Y. So this little box is gonna say X plus Y. I'll do that again. Part of the hypotenuse to the adjacent side, that adjacent side with the whole hypotenuse. X over M equals M over X plus Y. We can do the exact same thing on the other side. 
but that means I need to start on the Y. So I'm going to do Y over P. So part of the hypotenuse over the adjacent side equals P over X plus Y, the adjacent side over the whole hypotenuse. Y over P, P over X plus Y. In both cases, it doesn't matter what it is, but that middle thing is the same on both top and bottom. It's the same. M and P, those are the same. Okay. Again, it's a swoosh. I didn't touch the altitude at all. I didn't touch it one bit. So instead, we are just dealing with the outsides here. Okay, let's do this example. So we're actually gonna find X and Y. So we've got two parts in here. So that'll be helpful. Okay, I've got four and X. And I've got X over 16. Four over X, X over 16. So I chose to do X first. X is first in the alphabet. So again, you do part of the hypotenuse, which is four over its adjacent side, which is X. And then I have to come back again, X over, and then now I have to do the entire side. It's not just four, it's not just 12, it's four plus 12, which I can make easy for myself by writing it as 16 over here. Let me say that one more time. I've got four over X equals X over 16. Didn't touch the altitude, had to touch X twice. If you don't have something squared, if you don't have something written twice, you did something wrong. So that's a nice way to check yourself. Okay, so X times X is X squared. Four times 16 is going to be 64. Square root both sides. Square root, square root. Ooh, root 64, we know that. The square root of 64 is just eight. If you don't remember that though, no big deal. Make a factor tree, 64. 64 is, um, I know it's, of it is eight times eight, but whatever you do, if you don't remember that, you can still factor it out. I get two and four and I get four and two and I break those fours down to two and two and two and two. Every pair of twos, I get to take out one, two. That's one, two. That's another two. And this is my third two. So two times two times two is going to be eight. So that's how I got that number right there. Okay, cool, X is eight. Now, technically we could find Y using a different method, but I wanna just practice this um, proportions. So if you're like, oh, Miss White, could we do blah, blah, blah method? Probably yes, but I'm teaching you, ooh, that's awkward. I'm teaching you a lesson on this proportion setting. And so I wanna make sure that we do it this way. So to do Y, I'm gonna do the exact same Nike swoosh, but I gotta start on the other side of the hypotenuse. So I was already on four on the, the first one, now I'm on the other side, 12. So I've got 12 over Y equals Y over 16. 12 over Y equals Y over 16. Again, we check ourselves by knowing this is the same, so that's good for us, and I'll do it again. Part of the hypotenuse over its adjacent side, and then that side over the entire hypotenuse. And I know I just erased it, but we know this side is 16. 12 over Y equals Y over 16. Didn't touch the altitude, didn't touch the other side. It doesn't even matter what eight is, I don't even care. 12 over Y equals Y over 16. Okay, so let's solve that. Y squared equals 192, I believe. Let's square root both sides, square root square root, I get y equals square root of 92. Ooh, that's not a perfect one. I truly don't know off the top of my head. Let's do it off to the side. Um, I got two and 96. Ooh, I've got a long lines of twos now. Two and uh, 48. Yeah, I think that's okay. Two and 24. Two and 12, two and six. And then six is two and three. Now, some teachers teach you to do this factoring. This is totally fine with me. Or you can kind of do it in like a little um, mess like I did over here. Um, this is definitely very neat and keeps all your twos in order. Um, and the benefit here is I'm gonna have a lot of twos. So now I can see them all. I've got one pair of twos I can take out. I have another set of twos I can take out. I've got a third set of twos I'm gonna take out. Whew. Ooh, but three has no friends. So three has to stay inside. Two times two times two is gonna be eight. So Y equals eight root three. 
All right. I know this was a little different with the proportion setting up than we've done before, but I want you to either rewatch these problems um, and I want you to try the homework on your own. I think that you have a lot of tools to handle this by yourself. Um, or when your friend, when your neighbor's done, ask them to work together on your homework. That is totally fine with me. Um, if you need anything, again, we can watch a video again, or please email me, you know how to reach me. I won't see you again until Tuesday, unless I see you on Monday for online class. So again, test next time I see you in person. Um, homework on this you can do. Also, now that you've finished your notes, please, please, please turn that in. Um, yeah, and that's it. If you need me, let me know. Have an awesome day, guys. Have a good weekend. Be safe, be smart, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you soon.